Hi, I'm Jenny Rosenkranz from the University of Maryland Extension. Now, February can be a dreary month, but we're going to look at houseplants and see how easy some of these are to grow. So you too can go ahead and have like an indoor garden and it will be summer in your home all year long. So join me for Delmarva Gardens coming up next right here on Pack 14. You know, I love houseplants, but so many people are afraid to have a plant in the house because they're terrified if they don't take care of it properly, it's going to die. And they're like, I cannot be responsible for that. The thing you have to remember is plants, especially houseplants, like to live in the same place that we do in our homes. They like the same amount of sunshine that we have, either really bright in the window, bright but not in the window, or they like a little bit of soft light when like, for instance, when you're ready to snuggle up to a good book or just a, a good cup of tea or something like that or watch a movie and you don't want to have all that light around. Now, house plants are every place in your house, which is really good. And the other neat thing about plants are they are good for you. They make you feel good when, you're, when they're around. They actually improve the oxygen in your house and they also improve the amount of humidity in your house. When we have a house in the wintertime, it is hot and dry, or maybe if you have, uh, it, maybe it's not as hot as you want it to, but it's still very dry because the heater itself dries out the air. Having houseplants adds more moisture to the house without any mold or anything like that, but just making it easier for us to breathe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around and see some of the plants that are the easiest for you to grow. Some plants you only need to water once a month. That's perfect. Other plants you can go ahead and water once a week. But keep in mind when you're watering plants, I think that the key to watering plants is a little bit less is always better. Because all plants, including house plants, their roots have to breathe oxygen. So if you have too much water, they will actually drown. Oh no, you don't want that to happen, neither do I. Let me tell you, everybody's done it. I've done that too. Sometimes you just get too carried away with things and you water the plant over water and you forget about it. No, no, no. So we're just gonna go ahead and talk about how easy it is to grow some of these house plants. Well, let's go ahead and start out with this guy right here. Look at how colorful he is. This is one of the new Dracaenas. And this is a plant that in, in the, uh, where it lives, it lives under the shade of large trees. So it can have bright but indirect light. So this doesn't have to go in front of a window. It can go anywhere where it gets light in your house. So what's really cool about this is it's got dark, dark green on the inside of the leaf. And then it has the chartreuse, but notice it has a little bit of white also. And all of that means that this is what they call a tetraploid. And you don't really need to worry about that. But what it says is it's always gonna be bright and colorful for you. This is not one that's going to hide in the shadows. It's always gonna look bright and sunny, even on a cloudy, dreary, dreary February day. So this is one to look for. There's all kinds of others though. So join me right here down here. This is cool. These are succulents. I love succulents because they're easy to grow. Now these are adorable because they've gotten a whole bunch of teeny tiny ones put in a little container like this. Now these will eventually start to grow and you'll have to repot them but they are not fast growers. These like a lot of light but they don't like a lot of water. So again, for somebody who's concerned about that, water once a month, just a little bit, just enough to kind of get it. And you'll notice when it starts to kind of like uh, turn a different color, maybe it will say that I need some more water, but these guys don't need a whole bunch of water. And they do like a little bit of light, but they're also sometimes called hens and chickens, but I love the different textures and the colors. You've got a rose colored one here, almost a white one here, a deep purple over here. And this is sort of a pinky one and then green, and this is green with purple. It's just, they're, they're just gorgeous. This one's really cool. It's got hens and chickens also, but it also has this little guy here, which is a different type of aloe also, or I should say uh, hens and succulent too. And uh, this is a little zebra one, and it will always stay very small. So these are always gonna stay small and compact until the summertime when they decide that they might bloom on you. And that's not a problem either. So these are fun to start with because you can go ahead and have it in a bright sunny area or just a bright indirect area and they're gonna grow for you without hardly any care at all, which I love. Now this guy right here, this is a pothos. Pothos are heart-shaped leaves, a lot like a philodendron, but they have 
the variegated colors like this. So this is a type of plant that's a vine, and it'll grow and grow and grow. Um, I'm going to take it out of this decorative container. I love decorative containers, though, because they just, you can go ahead and water them and not ruin your furniture and all. But you can see how this is all from a little bunch right here. These will eventually start growing out and cascading down, which is really, really beautiful. To keep them nice and bushy, though, all you have to do is just trim them every, like, say, maybe once a year so that you can have that cascade, but give it a little bit of a, a trim every now and then. Anytime you prune a plant, even a house plant, you're saying, let's grow, let's get bushy, let's get fuller, more flowers or more leaves, okay? Easy peasy, one of my favorites. I wanna show the difference between the pothos and a philodendron. Now this is the philodendron. It also has heart-shaped leaves. The leaves are a little bit thinner and they're all glossy and green. I have two of these at home. One of them my mom gave to me years and years and years ago. So these are what they call pass along plants, ones that you can go ahead and share with friends or your family. When you do take the cuttings to make them smaller, then you can go ahead and root those cuttings in water and then you have a plant to give to a friend. They're so much fun and they're so easy. Okay, let's put these guys back here. Now this one right here, this is an interesting one, ponytail palm. Isn't that adorable? It comes up from this large, broad base right here to this part right here where they've gone ahead and trimmed it. And by trimming it like that, see how they've gotten it to grow out from all over the place? And then you have this gorgeous curling palm fronds. They're just so pretty. This again needs a little bit of light, but again, easy to grow. Now this one, oh my goodness, I love this one. This is, they call it Sansevieria, dark, dark green leaves with these really cool, funky, um, stripes here. They're not total stripes, but they're really pretty. Now, this one has a couple of interesting common names. One of them is mother-in-law's tongue. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why they call that. They do also sometimes call this a snake plant because it kind of looks like a snake, but don't worry, this one doesn't squirrel around or do anything. This plant is one of the easiest keepers in the world. You can go ahead and have this in a room that hardly ever gets sunlight. I have grown it in a room that only faces north, so it doesn't get any direct light. It is often fairly darkish, and it thrived. It even bloomed one time. I was like, good heavens. Um, they have short ones, and then they have these tall ones, and I'll show you some that are even taller than this. But these can be watered once a month. So if you're a busy person and you want houseplants but you just don't have the time, this is one you want to get. So go ahead and get a sense of it because they're very pretty. And they make a nice upright statement. Whoop. Okay. Oh, and look, right beside them, they have a plant that's in bloom. Okay. Now, some houseplants do bloom. And this one is just so cool. It's a little crisis and it uh, has these little flowers. Now the flowers are, are usually this time of year because this is a tropical plant. So and our winter is it's summer. So it will give you a lot of these little teeny plant flowers. Uh, this one is pink and um, they have an orange one right here. So if you're into oranges or pinks, aren't they pretty? Very, very sweet. All right. So we're gonna take a walk and see what else they have here because like a lot of places, they don't just have one plant to tempt you. There's so many choices. So let's go ahead and look for some more. Oh, I love these. These are Schifleras and these are like shrubs, but indoor shrubs. And when they have big leaves, when they're mature, it is a composite like this. So this whole thing right here in my hand is a leaf. But when they are tiny, tiny, look how delicate they are. Aren't they cute? Babies are always cute. Even baby leaves are cute. So it has a bunch of baby leaves. Now these like to have a little bit of more sun because uh, being shrubs, they're, they're kind of fighting for more space. They're not like vines that can go ahead and creep around on the floor of a jungle or something like that. These guys like a little bit more sun. But what I would suggest when you have it in the sunny window or bright indirect, every time you water, and this likes to be watered once a week, when you water it once a week, turn it a quarter turn every week. So it's always being turned every week. So every month it's back to the same place again. What that's gonna do is that's gonna keep the plant from growing toward you or growing toward the sun, I should say. And it'll keep it more evenly balanced. These are very, very easy keepers. But like I said, they like to be watered once a week. Let me go ahead and put this over here and then show you some more Sansevierias. So this, believe it or not, 
these three little guys right here together. These are Sansevieria's too, but they are very thick and they're just so cool. It's a different variety and they will go ahead and stay very small for, for quite a while. And then I love this one. This is also a Sansevieria, but notice how the outside edge is a soft yellow. So this is what they call a variegated one. And here's another one that does the same thing. Sometimes the yellow is darker, sometimes it's lighter, but these are absolutely beautiful. Now, when you're going to propagate something like this, you actually have to separate it because if you made a cutting of this, you'd have, it would go back to the original plant. But this is so nice because it gives you a little bit more color instead of just the green. Lovely, lovely, lovely. This little guy, we saw him with the little sedums and it's called the little zebra plant. So it's a type of sedum, but it always grows up like these little teeny tiny little spikes. And this is a real cute one because it's one of the type of plants you could have, like say on your desk or in a small area, under a lamp or something like that, just to give you a little bit of green without knowing that, with, without having to worry about replanting it every couple of years or something like that. This can stay nice and quiet in this beautiful little container and look gorgeous for years. This one just needs to be watered once a month. Love it, love it, love it. Let's go see some more. Ah, you know, there's so many different types of dracaenas. And dracaenas are cool too because they're actually called a dragon plant in some areas. Uh, and that's probably a lot easier to say than dracaena. Plus, dragons are cool, and so are these. So there's, a, like I said, a whole bunch of different varieties. This one right here is a red margined Dracaena. And so it starts out really, really green, but notice how every single edge has got a dark red stripe on it. Very, very pretty. And that makes it sound out, I think. Now this is going to get tall, but I'll show you that in a little bit. Now this one is called a rainbow Dracaena because it has so much more. It's got uh, sort of pinkish instead of red on the outside and then it's got white and then it's got green so lots of different colors in this one isn't that pretty when you when they're small like this they're so compact and so pretty but they have a tendency to grow i want to share one that's a little different this is also interesting but this is a polka dot one so it looks like an akuba but as an indoor plant so you can get this too really cool all of these guys like bright and indirect light and this one right here is a Dracaena, but because it's so broad and the base is so thick, they call this one a corn plant. And if you look at it, this looks a lot like the corn that we have growing on the Eastern Shore. Of course, this doesn't give you the, uh, the fruit, but the foliage is very pretty. Now notice how thick this is. This is a really good sized plant. And you can see where it's been cut. And every time where it's cut, notice how it started to grow again. So that's why I say every time you trim something, you're going to ask it to grow. So this is going to grow up higher. And when it gets to be about this high, you might want to say, OK, I think I need to prune it back. Don't worry about pruning it back. Go ahead and prune it and you're going to get some more foliage. Now this one again, this is the green dragon with the red leaves. Reds. But notice how much bigger this guy is. It's taller than me almost, but it has one, two, three, four, five of them in here, five stems and all different heights. It's just really cool. Now how this grows is that the foliage starts on down at the bottom and then as it moves up, you have new leaves, but it leaves that um, leaf scar right here, which is also very, very decorative right through here. I think that's very, very pretty. So these guys can get tall. If you have a large atrium or a large ceiling, like a two-story house, and some of it actually is used, these will grow all the way up to the top. So you can either say, that's a cool idea, or keep them small. But they are wonderful. Again, these guys like to be watered maybe once a week. Um, sometimes they can go ahead and go every other week. It depends on how much bright light you have. But they're very easy keepers, and every now and then you might want to dust them. Or you could go ahead and put them in the shower and hose them off. In the summertime, you can put them outside and just hose them off with a hose. That's perfect. Let them dry, bring them back on in sight. They'll be happy. Let me show you some more beautiful, beautiful house plants. I know I've shown you a lot of beautiful green house plants with a little bit of color. Well, sometimes there's varieties that have a lot of color. So this is a Diefenbachia. Quite often they're dark green, but this one's got a lot of white. The neat thing about this is the more white that you have on the foliage means that the more shadow it can take. So this one can handle indirect sunlight, but also it can handle less light too. So this would be one that you might want to have 
more in the back of the room rather than right in front of by the window. Diefenbachias are, they can get very, very large, but the smaller you keep the container, the smaller the foliage, and when you go up another size, only go a half an inch or an inch more, and then let it grow gradually large, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and at that point prune the roots as well as the top, but this way you can go ahead and have a plant that's the right size for you for quite a while. Now, even bakias are cool, but you don't want your pets to chew on these. So if you have cats or dogs that like to chew, this would not be one to choose. But you have this really cool little guy, and I just love the pink foliage on this one. So this is a very delicate one. It, now this one needs a little bit more light, uh, but they are very, very pretty. They give you a lot of different color, and I think they're fun. I'm gonna put this guy over here with all the other pretty little pink ones that kind of go with the theme. Now this one is really neat. This is called the tiger's plant, or tiger. And from this side, you just go, oh, really cool, green, and dark green. But take a look, the back is dark red. Isn't that cool? I just love the fact that a lot of these plants are kind of like multicolored, but you have to look at them a little differently just to see all the different colors. Very neat. And then this one is similar to a prayer plant, but this, I think they call this a peacock plant. And the colors are very pretty throughout the foliage. It's kind of like splash art. I just think it's lovely. And the stems are kind of a darker color again, a little bit more on the redder side. And this one right here is what they call a prayer plant. So that the, the stems, excuse me, the veins are red, and then you have the foliage is green with lighter greens through here. Now these guys are a little bit more particular about, uh, they don't want to be dried out, so you want to keep them evenly moist, but lightly moist, okay? So that doesn't mean soaking in water, but just every now, you know, once a week, you want to go ahead and water them to keep them evenly moist. That'd be the best thing for these guys. So I'm gonna go ahead and share, oh, there's one more plant I want to share up top. This one right here is a bromelid. So let me see if I can get it up for you. The neat thing about playing with these guys, you can go ahead and reach out. So bromelids are a type of orchid, but not. So what they do is they have these beautiful uh, leaves that are just cascading gorgeously. And then when they get ready to bloom, the foliage starts to getting a little bit more pinkish. And on the inside, you can see there's gonna be a flower there. Now these are easy to grow because all you do is pour water right in the very center. And they do so beautifully. I just love the cascading part of them too. Hey, tell you what, let's go take a look at some beautiful orchids because again, they're houseplants and they are not that difficult to grow. I know a lot of people think that orchids are really difficult and there are some that should only be in a greenhouse or grown down in Florida. The thing I think you need to remember about orchids is the roots of the orchids are actually air roots. Orchids in their natural setting, which is very, very far south in like say Florida, they actually wrap around a tree and hold on to the tree. So they get water every time it rains, which in the tropics is all the time. But again, remember, it's not sitting in a pot, it's wrapped around the tree. So it's always getting a little bit of moisture, a little bit, not a lot. So when we have orchids in our house, we give them a little bit of water. And you probably have heard about the ice cube orchids where you can give it one, or one ice cube or two or three. It depends on how large the plant is. Ice cubes are cold. These guys are tropical. Do you guys not see if there's a problem with that? What I do is, to, in the beginning, I put three ice cubes in a measuring cup, and I saw that it was about a quarter cup of water. So I used room temperature water, because I don't want to shock them, and I pour a little bit of water on them once a week. And they like to have bright but indirect sunlight, and they do beautifully. Now, the reason why I say bright and indirect, remember they're growing on a tree with the shade of the tree, giving them some shade. So they're getting a lot of bright but indirect light. So this is a Phalaenopsis. These are the easiest ones to grow. They're also called the moth orchid because they kind of look like moths. But what's really cool about them is that the very shape of the flower and these beautiful veins that are very colorful, these are the ones that attract the pollinators. And they actually have a little place that they can land on so that they can get into the flower and get the pollen that they need. I love these colors. And the moth orchids come in lots of different colors. This one right here is a pale yellow with a dark, dark purple center. Absolutely gorgeous, isn't that lovely? Again, easy, easy to grow. The foliage is a nice, thick leaf. And let me show you, here are the roots. So the roots are kind of greenish, and that's normal because 
since they wrap around the truck, sometimes they actually collect a little bit of chlorophyll themselves. So these are usually potted in bark and for really, really good drainage. They like to be around the tree. The bark makes them think, oh, I'm around a tree. How cool is life? Love it, love it, love it. So these guys will thrive. Now, I've had them so um, they bloom, and I want to share one thing with you with, on these guys. After these finish blooming, right here you can see that there are places where it's grown and grown and then grown and grown. After this blooms, you want to go ahead and cut it right on top of this little line, so right about there. And that will tell it, wow, the flower's gone. But you haven't cut the whole stem, and it says, I will go ahead and bloom again. It's kind of like when we have zinnias outside in the summer and the flower's perfect, we want to bring it inside, we cut it. It tells the plant, oh no, I want to make seeds. You just took my flower. Oh, deadheading. Um, and then what, what it'll do, it'll throw out more flowers. And that's what these guys will do. Now, it won't flow, throw out a lot of flowers right away. They like to bloom in the winter. Our winter is their summer but it's pretty happy to do that. So it'll bloom this year. And these flowers actually stay beautiful like this for a lot of like months, like two to three to four months. And I love that. That is so cool because they almost look like artificial flowers, but they're not. And then they'll bloom again for you next year and people will be astonished. Look at you, how you can grow an orchid. Easy peasy. They are so cool. Hold a second. I wanna share another really cool plant with you. This is an anthurium. Again, this is from Hawaii, and it has gorgeous, glossy foliage, but look at this bright red flower. This is real cool. Now, this flower is this bright red because this part right here with, is the, uh, the pollinator part, and the bright red basically attracts all the pollinators and say, hey, come on, here's where the ne nectar and pollen are. And so every one of them is bright red with this little spike on top, which is easy for the pollinators to get to. So this is the type of uh, flower in Hawaii that every clumsy pollinator loves because it's easy to get to. So, and this is so pretty. And these will last a long time. So again, not just days or weeks, this bright red flower can last almost a month. Now I've got a couple other really cool plants. Some of them are solid green, but some of them have bright, bright colored leaves. So I'll show you those. Now some plants have a tendency to get really, really large. They might start small, like this beautiful Norfolk Island pine, but in the wild on Norfolk Island, these things get to be 100 feet tall, but they only grow two to three inches tall a year. So what you wanna do with these guys, again, this is a tree that likes to be outside, but indoors, you're gonna to wanna to keep it in a bright, sunny window. And it's really important at that point to turn it a quarter turn every week because this is gonna get big and if if it leans too much, it's gonna fall over. Not good, not good. One you can see also, if you take a look, here's the foliage right here, and then it starts again here, and then here, and then here. So the difference between the leaves is very, very short. That's really good. You wanna make sure that the, the stretch here is not really tall. So having like a half an inch to an inch between the leaves like this is excellent. That means the plant is going to grow slowly and compactly, and to do that, you will need to have full sun for that. So that's kind of important. But there's a lot that don't need full sun. Like for instance, this monstera. This is a type of philodendron also, but notice how the leaves are notched, giving it lots of different texture, which I think is gorgeous. Now this guy doesn't mind being in a darker corner because he's solid green. And he likes to be where there's a little bit more shade. If this one is too much in the sunshine, they'll actually, the leaves will burn. This one right here is called a peace lily. And I think that this is one of the easiest ones for people to grow. This one, it, oh, it does actually bloom. Here's the flower, it's starting to bloom already. It's just pure white. But notice how the leaves, when they start to uncurl, that they just, they're like a, they unswirl. It's almost like a dance, they're beautiful. These are nice because these are the type of plants that will tell you, it's time to water me. The leaves will actually start to wilt and you go, oh, time to order the plants. So if you're not thinking every Saturday or every Sunday it's time to order my plants, the peace lily will tell you, it's time to order the plants. I wanna share one more plant with you because this is so cool. This, not, like I said, some of the plants are gonna have more color. And this is the Thai or the Hawaiian Thai plant. And it has this beautiful orchid color. Isn't that fabulous? So when the leaves first emerge, they have this bright, bright color, this really captivating orchid color. 
and then as it matures it turns a nice rich dark green. So this one needs a little bit more light but again it's absolutely beautiful. It's a lot like a Dracaena. Well I hope you really enjoyed this tour of the houseplants and I hope you get a little bit more confidence that you too can go ahead and grow houseplants inside and feel comfortable with them. Stick with the ones that are the easiest first but then broaden out to some more creative ones like the Thai plant and enjoy all the houseplants in your home. So thank you so much for joining me for Delmarva Gardens right here on Pack 14.